like to think that we have 25 years of experience in this design, and you should. Uh, one aircraft always inspires uh, you to think of greater ideas or better ideas that uh, you want to, like we design a new airplane when we've got enough good ideas to justify the reason to do it. Okay. You know, it's, and we've refined aircraft and then you get to a, kind of a stopping point on refinement and it's time to start over with a clean sheet of paper. So the 19 is a clean sheet of paper. It combines all the design experience we've had with like the Pursuit and the Shikari. And I suppose there's a little bit of Coyote and Courier in there as well, although there's not a shred of tube and fabric evidence in it. But um, I think it's a good winner. Uh, I'll tell you the exact design philosophy was is that there was a day in the shop that I noticed that uh, the girls took 30 hours to cut out and sew a suit of sails for Coyote. Our machines cut out all the parts for this airplane in 30 hours, and there's nobody having to do it. You know, you can just have it on uh, kind of a part-time monitoring basis. Wow. So now you got that back to that repeatability, that producibility. So that to us as a business and also as a designer is very exciting to have that capability. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. Now, back to Aero TV. Walking around here, there's an awful lot of competition, a lot of airplanes out here. But every time we come out here from one year to the next, there's a lot of airplanes, but a lot of stuff that is here this year, wasn't here last year, and stuff that was here last year is gone. Will you survive? Even after 25 years, can you survive in the LSA market, and why? Well, we plan on surviving. I can't guarantee you if the sun will rise tomorrow. Uh, I think we'll survive, and the reason why is because we have a very unemotional attachment to the market. Okay. You know, uh, if we don't sell, we don't sell. If we do, we do. We, we almost believe that um, if you do your job right, you build a good product, you satisfy your customers, you will survive. Very basic simple business principle and that's what I built my business on. I don't know if you remember way back when I was back here in 84 at Sun and Fun, I walked around and I talked with guys like Bill Adaska and Lyle Bryarm and um, who? Who? Yeah, those kind of guys and I thought you know what this is gonna be easy all I gotta do is be honest. Aero TV is brought to you by Today there is an affordable, high-performance, easy-to-own, and easy-to-operate very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin-engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500, the jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. Now, back to Aero TV. Well, you've done a very good job with Honest Airplanes over, uh, overall. I've flown a number of your designs over the years and can't say I didn't enjoy every single one of them. We're looking forward to trying out the 19. What features in the 19 might you uh, specify as something that people need to notice above and beyond the competition? There's quite a few. In fact, we just published a little article about that, how the 19 goes above and beyond the standard. We have things like uh, 18G seats to absorb spinal, uh, to prevent spinal injuries. We've built the aircraft to a 1,475 pound gross, so the durability is built into the aircraft. We've got little things that you wouldn't think are a safety feature, like a sliding canopy. If you have an engine failure, what are you going to do if you flip upside down in a bubble top plane? Open the canopy before you land, that kind of thing. Uh, we have also actually real roll bar protection in that canopy. We have a fuel system that are, has like the tanks outboard in the wings, but even further outboard to keep the fuel away from you. And those tanks themselves are located behind the spars, and they're made out of a high-impact plastic, so the likelihood of them exploding and spreading fuel air everywhere is reduced. Uh, the whole front end of the aircraft has more structure than you actually need 
to create crush zones to absorb energy if you would have to have a severe frontal impact to allow the, the energy to be survivable up to a certain point, of course. And then, of course, pilot restraint is good in this aircraft, right? the right angles, the right amount of points of contact on the body. And then ultimately what makes a plane safe is good handling, uh, large speed range, and uh, great visibility. All those things. And good ergonomics, because if you're not comfortable and... Yeah, what's the point? Is that yeah. If you're not having any fun, you don't want to go flying. Exactly. If you can remain comfortable, alert, the plane's responsive, and it's an honest airplane like you mentioned, I feel those are all factors that make it a safe airplane and also a cut above the rest of the guys. So, is the 19 the best thing you've done so far? You know, that's a trick question, isn't it? it sure is. Uh, they're all the best thing I've done so far in that type of aircraft. And is it the best state of the art at this time? Yes. Uh, where it is the best over some of our other planes, it's a very solid, it's a very different uh, timber to the vibration, to the, uh, to the tone of the aircraft. Uh, it's like flying a Bonanza or something, real smooth, quiet, and solid. And uh, not to say that the other timber and the other planes is bad, it's just that I like the tune that I'm hearing in this plane now, and I, I find myself flying it quite a bit. Good to hear. Real quick, what's happening with the rest of the Rand's line at this point? It continues to evolve. Uh, the 7, we've got a, um, an interesting number of changes planned for that aircraft. Okay. Uh, the 6 is going to have a major, major surprise coming soon, and I don't even know if we can continue to call it a 6. Uh, we, we always have about um, five or six projects in the works in our factory, and uh, we're kind of, to describe this more accurately, is we're an R&D company that has to do production, or just so happens to do production, rather than a production company that happens to do R&D. We live for, for doing R&D. Let's face, let's, let's tell the truth here. Production pays the bills so you can play with the toys. Uh, you could be right about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the fun things from watching you uh, out in Kansas every now and then is I've never seen you out there scowling. You're always smiling about something. I must confess that I tell people I retired when I was 28. And then they say, well, you're a lucky bastard, you know. I says, but I retired from convention. That's when I got one of those golden lessons by uh, learning what I wanted to do, and I knew what I wanted to do, and, and uh, went independent. And I never regretted it and never looked back. So, yes, we're having fun. We're still having fun after all this time. Good deal. Randy, thanks much for your time. You bet. Thank you, Jim.